Hey, it's Scott with International Safety. We're gonna talk about the MSA Galaxy GX2 today with any accessories that you might be able to purchase with it. So this is your, uh, your test stand right here. Um, so this is kind of the brains of the whole operation. And then this is your electronic cylinder holder. So one big benefit to the MSA electronic cylinder holder, you'll notice this collar is green. What that means is that you have good cylinder of gas in here that's full, unexpired, and it's ready to calibrate or bump test your monitors. How this cylinder holder knows that this calibration gas is good is inside all MSA calibration gas cylinders, there's an RFID chip. That RFID chip is pre-programmed with the type of gas that you have, the expiry date, the lot number, everything that this needs to know is in this cylinder. And then that in turn turns this collar green. You'll notice if I take this cylinder off, the color will go to orange and then we'll go to red. So if you put an expired cylinder on here, that's going to stay red. If you put an empty cylinder on here, that's going to stay red. One big benefit too is it's a good visual indicator. So if your cylinder is getting low, if you're at, I believe it's 30% or less, you'll, you'll notice that that cylinder holder will actually go yellow. So that's when you know that your cylinder should be replaced soon and you should order one from internationalsafety.com. Now MSA does make a non-electronic cylinder holder. Essentially it doesn't have this light up collar. The cylinder sits on top or sits upright I should say and you have a regulator that just screws onto the top. You'll still be able to see whether your cylinder is getting empty just based on the, the numbers on your regulator but you don't have this light up option. Obviously a little bit cheaper but you don't have that same benefit of your light up collar and it talking to your, your test stand itself. Now your third option would be to have your test stand with no cylinder holder, which is still an option. All you would do in that case is take a piece of Tigon tubing to a regulator, screw your regulator onto your cylinder, and then your cylinder just stands loosely on here. Now, if you're using a five gas unit or running your test stands in a series of banks, say you have a, a four gas and then a two gas, you can put additional cylinder holders off the side of this by just connecting them on the right side here and you can run multiple different types of gas. One thing to keep in mind is always consult the user manual for which types of gas should be in the series because there is a specific way that you should line that gas up. If you have any questions on that, we'd be happy to help. Okay, so this is the, the four gas test stand that we have on here. So like I said, this is kind of the brains of everything that's going on here. You'll notice the touch screen on the front, and that's where you can change settings, change your calibration interval, change your bump test interval, um, and see when your monitor either passes or fails a bump test. I have a five gas test stand over here. You notice it looks pretty much the exact same. It just has this, the larger slot with the slide up so that your pump can be inserted up here on your five gas unit. Now, both the four gas, the five gas, and if you had a two gas, test stand comes in a couple of options. Here we have the non-charging option. So you'll notice there's no charging port sticking out at the bottom of these units. Also available in a charging option. It's good for if you just have one or two monitors that you want to pop on at the end of every day. It will automatically bump test in the morning for you and then you can just grab it, it's charged, it's good to go. Now if you have multiple gas monitors, what you might want to think about is a multi-bank charger. This can be just simply screwed on and added to your unit at the end here. So everything would be connected and together. And then all you would do at the end of every shift, pop your monitor in here. It's going to be red when it's still charging or green in, in, if it's a full charge. Good visual indicator for if you have multiple workers want to grab or multiple shifts even want to grab a monitor that's fully charged. You can see that that light's green. Green is good to go. All you would do, take that monitor out, turn it on and do your bump test for the day. One other neat thing about the MSA test stands is you can actually insert an SD card into any of the test stands that MSA offers. That's great for storing your calibration logs, your bump test logs, and makes it easy for you to pull that information if you ever had to in the future. So this cylinder of gas I have in here right now is just a small 34 liter cylinder from MSA. These are available in both a 34 liter and 58 liter option and I believe a couple sizes larger as well. 
58 liter is probably our most popular um, just because you're going to get more bump tests, more calibrations out of it. But if you're not using your monitors too frequently, the 34 liter is a good option as well. Now some gas does have an expiration date. You'll notice that that's always printed on the label. And obviously if you have the electronic cylinder holder as well, that's going to tell you if that gas is expired. So always keep an eye on that. Uh, make sure you're not using expired gas. Really important if you don't have an electronic cylinder holder, just to keep an eye on that. So on the test stand, you'll notice this nice touch screen on the front. The touch screen makes it super easy to see the status of your GX2 and then to see if your monitor has passed or failed your bump test or calibration. On the front here, you'll see the cylinder contents. So if you have half your cylinder available, you'll see that that is easily seen here. And then if you tap on your cylinder, you'll actually see what type of gas is in there, the lot number, the part number, and then when that actually expires. Really nice visual indicator here, so you don't have to unscrew your gas to see if you're coming up to your expiry date. And then one big benefit too is with the electronic cylinder holder, if I were to take my four gas mix off and put on say isobutylene for a PID sensor, all I would have to do is unscrew that cylinder, screw it back in, the isobutylene, and then that cylinder holder tells your test stand what type of gas is in here. So you don't have to actually change any settings on your test stand itself. Unlike if you had a non-electronic cylinder holder or no electronic cylinder holder, you actually have to manually change what type of gas is in there every time you change it out. One of the common questions we get asked is why is my monitor not bump tested or calibrating when I put it in the actual unit itself? And more often than not, we see that users are in the administrator menu. And all you got to do in that case is really just make sure you push the home button and you're on that home screen, you see your MSA logo, and then you're good to go for your bump test or calibration. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll show you how easy it is to do a bump test and a calibration on this test stand. So all you do is once your monitor is turned on, boot it up, ready to go, you just put it in bottom first, and then push it in until you hear that click. Test stand automatically knows that this monitor has been put into the unit and is now gonna go through a full calibration. On the front of your screen here, you'll see the numbers on the screen trying to reach those numbers that it needs to reach to pass a proper calibration. And it's gonna go through each sensor one by one. So a full calibration on a four gas monitor typically takes about 90 seconds or so. It's gonna do a zero cal on the sensors first, and then it's gonna go through each sensor one by one, and then make sure that they'll reach the limits that they need to be reaching in order to be properly calibrated. Now, if we were doing a bump test on this monitor, bump tests typically take no more than about 30 seconds. Uh, again, you would follow the same procedure, insert the monitor, make sure you're on that home screen, and it will automatically start its bump test. So now that our calibration is done, on the front of the screen here, you can see the green screen, meaning that we passed this calibration. So now all I have to do, pull up on my tab here, pull the monitor out, and now my monitor is good to go for the day. So now what I'm gonna do on this test stand is actually just a bump test. Same procedure as a calibration. Once your monitor's booted up, gone through its boot cycle, you're gonna make sure you're on the home screen, insert the monitor into the test stand until you hear a little or feel a little click there. And now the monitor is actually gonna go through and do a proper bump test. With a bump test, instead of numbers on the screen, you're actually just gonna see green check marks come up. So it's just hitting this, this monitor with a little bit of gas at a time, checking each sensor. We're gonna get a green check mark on each sensor. And now we should get a good green screen on here to let us know that our bump test has passed. So now we see our bump test has passed. If you wanna see the bump details to see what your sensors hit, we can see that there. So we see each sensor in this case passed. And again, we're good to take this off push up on the tab, pull the monitor out, and now we got our check mark on our monitor, and we know that we're good to go for the day. So that's our quick rundown on the MSA Galaxy GX2 test stand, cylinder holder, and multi-bank charger. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at internationalsafety.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and please stay tuned for our next video.